Hello, happy hump day. It's Wednesday. Um, we are on to chapter 18 of The Advantage of the Wishing Chair. Tinker, who's been at school for the last couple of days, we've had four days of the, of, of Molly's because we had the two weekend days. <laughs> and then Monday and Tuesday. So you haven't seen Tinker for ages, so you've had enough of seeing me. So there's, there's the Tinker. So uh, uh, what's school been like? Good. Enjoyed it, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we've done lots of bike riding with with Molly in between stuff. So um, so yeah, she officially learnt. She officially learnt. No, exactly. It's a grim day today. You can't really sort of see. It's but rainy. We had to run across the garden. We did, and we're obviously not in the open air today because it's raining. It's not huge. It's not massively raining. It's more drizzle, to be honest. But but you can probably hear it. I don't know if the, the, the people at home can hear. Can you hear yeah, it? I don't know. Well, I don't know. They can't <laughs> reply, can they? So I don't know. Yes, they. Yes, we can hear. Yeah. Um, right. So um, let's crack on because I've got my next call at one o'clock. Sorry, we didn't actually do an intro. Oh no. It's we said we were gonna have it on yeah, Monday. Right. Yeah, we lied. <laughs> we lied. Don't know when we're going to do that. Well, well, and to be honest, we've said that we're going to kind of finish when we get to the end of this book. And we're on chapter 18 at the moment. And there's 26 chapters. So it takes us <laughs> rather irritatingly to, I'd love to say, it kind of finish next Friday. But I don't think it does. 18, 19, 20 this week. 26 chapters. So it takes we us might, to the we, Monday of the following week. We might week. do like a few more. Like to get to the end of the week, we'll probably do picture books. Yeah. We'll, we'll, to get we'll to do, the we'll, end of we'll the week. And then nice, sadly... We'll get it to a nice neat end. Look at that big pile of books. That's that's the that's the pile of books that we've done at kind of right weekends. And that's that's not all of them, I don't think. Huge great pile. Why well, has got Harry Potter at the bottom? I can't yeah. even put my hand around it. Can't even put your hand around what massive hands you've got, Grandma. Right. Grandma. I was just referencing whatever book is that when they when the, when is it uh, Red Riding Hood? Red Riding. Red Riding Hood. Yeah. Right. The Adventures of the Wishing Chair. By any of Blyton, over to you to read. Okay. Mr. Twisty. One day, when the two children and Kinky were in their playroom at the bottom of the garden, reading quietly, a knock sounded at the door. They looked up. A small man stood there with his face hat, with his straw hat in his hand, and a sly look on his face. Have you anything old to sell? he asked. I buy old clothes, furniture, carpets, anything you like. I'll give you a good price for it too. No, thank you, said Molly. We shouldn't sell anything unless our mother said so. What about that old chair there? said the man, pointing on the wishing chair to the wishing chair. It can't be wanted or you wouldn't have it in your playroom. I like the look of that. I'll give you a good price for it, that. Certainly not, said Peter. Please go away or I'll call the gardener. The little man put on his straw hat, grinned at them all and went. Kinky looked uncomfortable. I don't like the look of him, he said to the children. He may make, a, make trouble for us. I think I'll hop out, in, out, out into the garden today. I don't like people seeing me here. So he hopped out and went to the playroom with, pl to play with the fairy folk there. And a good thing he did too, for in about ten minutes, Mother came down to the garden aloud, followed by the little man in the straw hat. Are you there, Peter and Molly? She said. Oh, this man, Mr. Twisty, says he will buy anything old. And he said an old chair were here he would like to buy. I could, couldn't remember it. Which is it? Poor Molly and Peter. They had kept their wishing chair such a secret. And now the secret was out. They really didn't know what to say. Mother saw the chair and looked puzzled. I don't remember that chair at all, she said. I'll give you two pounds for it, said Mr. Twisty. <laughs> two pounds? Two pounds. It was different, kind of like, you know, I remember in the very first chapter they talked about the fact that the, the they, they, they were buying, they were the buying something for their mother for the vase, the vase. as you would say, um, the vase for was 35 like, pence or something, wasn't like, it? Like, you wouldn't get a vase nowadays for 35 Pri Prices are different. So that right? probably means like 20 pounds. Yeah, it's kind of like this, yeah. yeah. It isn't worth it, but I'll take it for that. That seems a lot, a lot of money for a playroom chair, said mother. We'll fetch it tonight and you can have it. Oh, mother, mother, shrieked the two children in despair. You don't understand. It's our own, it's very own chair. We love it. It's a very precious sort of chair. Whatever you do mean, said mother in surprise. It doesn't look at all precious to me. Well, Molly and Peter knew quite well that they couldn't say it was a wishing chair and grew wings. It'll be taken away from them at once. 
then and put it into a museum or something. Whatever were they to do? Two pounds for the dirt, that dirty old chair, said Mr. Twisty, looking slyly at the mother. At mother. Very well, said mother. I'll send, it f I'll send for it tonight, said Mr. Twist Twisty, and he bowed and went up, up, up to the garden. Don't look so upset, silly billies, said mother. I'll buy a nice comfy wicker chair instead. Molly and Peter said nothing. Molly burst into tears as soon as Mother had gone. It's too bad, she sobbed. It's our own wishing chair, and that horrible Mr. Twisty's buying it for two pounds. Chingy came in, and they told him what had happened. He grinned at them and put his arm round Molly. Don't cry, he said. I've got a good plan. What? asked Molly. I can get Mr. Nobbles, the pixie carpenter, who lives out in the field over there to make me a chair almost exactly like the wishing chair said kinky well let mr twisty have that one not ours he won't know the difference he doesn't know ours is a wishing chair he just thinks it's an old and valuable chair well he can buy one just like it without the magic in it you said molly and peter pleased can you really get one made in time i think so said kinky come along with me and see so they squeezed under the hedge at the bottom of the garden and crossed the field beyond to where the big oak tree stood. Chinky pu pu pulled a root aside that stuck out above the ground, and under it was a trapdoor. You simply never know where the little folk live, said Molly excitedly. Chinky rapped on the door. It flew up and a bold, bold-headed pixie with enormous ears popped his head out. Chinky explained what he wanted and the pixie invited them into his workshop underground. It was a dear little place, scattered with small tables, chairs and stools that the carpenter had been making. Do you think you could make us a chair in time? asked Molly eagerly. Well, if I could get a quick spell, I could, said the pixie. A quick spell makes you work three times as fast as usual, you know. But they are so expensive. Oh, said Molly and Peter in dismay. Well, we've hardly any money. Wait, said Chinky, grinning at them in his wicked way. Remember that Mr. Twisty is paying two pounds for the chair. Can you make the chair and buy the quick spell for the two pounds, Mr. Nobbles? Mr. Nobbles worked out a sum on a bit of paper and said he just could. He came back to the playroom with the children and saw their own chair. He nodded his head and said he could easily make one just the same. The children were so pleased. They hugged Kinky and said he was the cleverest person they had ever known. He always knew just how to get them out of difficulty, out of any difficulty. Now, we better hide our own chair, said Kinky. Where, where shall we put it? In the gardener's shed, said Molly. Gardener will be gone at five. We'll put it, put it there then. So they did and covered it up with sacks. Just as they came back from the shed, they met Mr. Nobbles carrying on his back a new chair just exactly like their old one. It was marvellous. The quick spell worked exactly. Quickly, he said. Here's the chair. You can bring me the money any time. The children thanked him and put the chair in their playroom. Then they waited for Mr. Twisty. He turned up for a bit for it at half past six, his straw hat in his hand and the usual wide smile on his face, his sly face. Ah, there's the chair, he said. Here's the money, thank you very much. He took the chair on his back, paid over the money and went whistling a tune. Well, he's got a marvellous pixie chair for his money, said Kinky, but he hasn't got a wishing chair. He can sell that chair for £20, I should think, for Mr Nobbles has made it beautifully. He hasn't used a single nail, so everything is a magic glue. And we've got our own dear chair still, cried the two children, and sat down on it for joy. Just then, Mother popped her head in and saw the chair. Kinky only just had time to hide himself behind the sofa. Why, she said, the chair isn't sold after all. I'm quite glad, because it really is a pretty chair. I can't imagine how I came to let you have it in your playroom. I think I'll have, have it in the house. Bring it up with you tonight, Peter. Mother went away, away again. Kinky popped out from his hiding place and looked at the others in dismay. I say, he said, that's bad news. You have to do as you were told, Peter. Take the chair up to... to to the house with you when you go tonight and we'll try and think of some way out of this new fix oh dear why can't we have our own chair so peter took it up to the house with him and mother put it into the study suppose it grew wings there whatever would happen da, 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 da. oh dear let's go from one dilemma to another I know. yeah and tomorrow's chapter 19 two bad children
know who that's going to be. Well, we know there's, well, yeah. two, there's only two children, aren't there? But the other one, there was there was an episode the other day where they, it looked like it was going to be about something and it, was, it wasn't. Okay. Um, so we guessed and we got it wrong. I it was, was I thought that it would... Um, I thought that the, pic, like, the guy coming to get it, I thought he act, like secretly knew... That, I thought he was listening and knew... I thought he knew it was a wishing chair. chair. That's he why was, he wanted it so much. Yeah. And like was sly... It turns out he was just some sort of peddler. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit rude to come into a children's playhouse, well, though. So it's, it's kind of breaking into their garden. Well, and just not, we would be a bit, find it a bit yeah, odd if somebody. It's a playhouse, if not. Mr. Twisty why wouldn't came you in here and said, I'll buy that chair. I'm like, yeah. No, this is yeah, our chair! Yeah, sure. <laughs> they are. Fully demonstrated exactly what would happen if Mr. Twisty came in <laughs> and wanted to buy that chair. <laughs> Right, okay, should we TTFN now? Because I need some dinner. So, TTFN will be back tomorrow. Bye!